You've got to be persistent. You may very well lose the first four years, especially in today's environment where we have so much uncertainty about what is killing colonies. First time in probably 15 years, I don't have any guarantees that the colonies that I have left, even though they looked good even up to three weeks ago when I was in them, they looked in great shape. But I have no guarantee that the next time I go out there, they're not going to be dead. And that's disconcerting. It's an unrelated question, but sometimes if you could answer it in the presentation, it works. Uh, you know, when you see this, because I noticed when you had that slide about capturing storms, I've tried to capture storms and it's like hurting cats. I mean, they just, yeah. you just can't seem to get them in a box and they don't stay there and they fly away. I yeah. just wondered if you had some pointers. On I, do so have, I do have a couple pointers. Let me, let me I'll, I'll try to come back to it. Okay. There's a couple key points I want to get out in the time that we have. What I really want you guys to take out of this is how do you build your own understanding of what's cooking in your colonies. In order to understand that, you've got to understand three major data points. You've got to understand the bee's life cycle, both as an individual honeybee and as a colony. Then you have to understand the schedule of your environment. And then you have to decide what are you into beekeeping for? I'm into beekeeping because it takes me back in time. I like the honey. I have customers who want my honey. But I'm not into it to make a million. I'm doing it because most of the time I spend staring at a computer screen and arguing on the telephone during my daily life. This is my secret identity where the real me can come out. Here's the key. Here is one of the absolute major keys. If you don't understand this, you'll never succeed in being here. You've got to understand what I term the six-week mindset. That goes back to the question that was over here that led into the production, into the presentation. <coughs> it takes 21, roughly 21 days, three weeks, from the time that queen pops that egg out, plants it in the cell, until a bee comes out of that cell as a baby honeybee. Three weeks. For drones, it's a little longer. It's 28 days instead of 21. For queens, it's 16 days. 24 days for drones. 24 days for drones. Okay. The main thing you need to listen to is you need to get your head around this six-week mindset. Because what you're wanting to try to do with this is your, for example, what is today? March 30th, something like that, 29th, 30th? What is six weeks from today? Roughly? Middle of, middle of May? Okay, what's going on in the plant world in the middle of May? Everything is blooming. So what do you think is going on inside the colony right this second while we're sitting here? The queen is laying at maximum capacity so that when six weeks comes, she's got a field force out gathering nectar. You're always thinking, where am I six weeks from now? Because that gives you clues to where the honeybees are today. Anybody have an idea about when the maples and the willows bloom in Ohio? Maples right now. Willows are a little bit, maybe a couple of weeks earlier. So we're talking mid-March to late March is when the first natural pollen starts showing up out in the wild, right? So if you back up from today, go back six weeks. Where are we? February 15th, roughly, right? What's going on on February 15th inside the colony? She's beginning to pump up her production of eggs in order to have a field force ready to go get the pollen that's coming in and the honey that's coming in, which we don't even see yet. The six-week mindset is absolutely crucial. Willows, maples, mid-March, where did the foragers come from, when? Eggs were laid approximately the first part of February. 
They hatched approximately the 21st of February. Three weeks later, the foragers are ready to rock and roll and are out playing their game with the willows and the maples. And the willows and the maples are saying, cool, here comes my little buddies. Can you guys see this? I know the colors are a little bit funky. The blue is a chart representing how many day old larvae are in the colony, roughly. Okay, and this is for Ohio. This is not for California, this is for Ohio. This measures thousands of bees, the red line, and day old larvae. Now, take a look. I don't know if you can read it. January, February, March, April, May, June, and so on and so forth. We are actually close toward the end of March. This chart I did last year, this basically it's the same thing. We are actually on the upswing of the thousands of bees being born. Look at the egg laying though. Look at when it crosses over and starts to develop. We're talking mid-January. Mid-January, inside that colony, at the center of the cluster, it's 90 some odd degrees which is the temperature that it takes to mature and hatch a honeybee egg and develop it. Mid-January. What was going on mid-January here, this year? Snow. Snow. It was freezing. How many people, real, how many people remember that mid-January, it's more likely in that month for us to get into an extended period of below zero? But what's going on in the hive? They maintain the temperature and they're beginning to build. It's funny. Before I was a beekeeper, I didn't pay much attention to the equinoxes. But now when December 22nd hits, there's a part of my brain that starts thinking about the colonies. Because about the time of the equinox is about when I start realizing, hey, they're going to start gearing up. Now, so if you're going to be successful at beekeeping, you've always got to be asking yourself, where is the colony today? In order to answer that question, you have to say, where are they wanting to be in six weeks? The next thing, so we've got two data points that we've worked with so far. First is the six-week mindset. Three weeks from egg to hatch honeybee. 